Hi mountain bikers, it's fall, all the leaves have fallen off the trees, and you know what that means, it's leaf blowing season! <laughs> so I have been leaf blowing the trails in the Pittsfield State Forest for about five years maybe, and I really enjoy riding leaf blown trails because they're more fun, you can ride them faster, and you don't have to worry about sticks getting stuck in your derailleur, and a lot of our trails are very narrow and windy and twisty and some people can't follow them when the leaves are on the ground and it's also safer especially for hikers and runners so they don't sprain their ankles on things they can't see and for proof of that here are pictures of a friend of mine who broke his ankle or more like his whole leg when he slipped on some leaf covered roots while hiking on the Appalachian Trail which is a very rooty trail that has not ever been leaf blown. I get a lot of grief for leaf blowing the trails from a small number of people. Some people appreciate it, some people don't. The ones who don't, their primary argument is that the trails are rooty because of the leaf blowing. I have been hiking and biking on the trails in the Pittsfield State Forest for 45 years and the trails were rooty and rocky prior to leaf blowers even existing. So I don't buy that. However, I don't discount that they could do some damage. But I think the underlying cause of the problem is soil compaction from hiking, walking, and riding on the trails. And the roots, in New England anyway, are just below the surface. They don't run way down deep. They run near the surface. And when the soil gets compacted, the roots come out and that's why our trails are rooty. I only see two ways of fixing that. One is to fill in the roots, which is really hard because it's very hard to dig around here because there's roots everywhere. Sometimes you can find a tree that's toppled over and underneath it there'll be a lot of nice soil that you can use to fill in roots on the trail. The other option is to cut the roots out, which I have been doing on a couple trails. One is the roller coaster and the other is Turner and a third is honey bear. So those three trails are going to be leaf blown and I will bet you money because of the work I've done they will be less rooty than most of the other trails around here. So the rest of this video is from the spring of 2020 when I went around and surveyed trails that I had not leaf blown and tried to determine how much leaf litter actually piles up. It isn't very much once the bikes ride over this and the leaves get broken up and break, break down into nothing. So enjoy the rest of this video. Thanks for watching. Okay, I think people greatly overestimate how much the leaf cover actually fills in the trail. This trail was not leaf blown last year and it's just full of roots. There's pockets of leaves, but none of them are on the roots. The roots are all leaf free. So let's measure how much leaf cover there is there. I'm gonna to try to scoop up how much leaf covers here. That's it. How thick is this? I don't know if you can see that, but that says just 0 0.033 inches of leaf cover. Now this particular root is about an inch and a half tall. So 1.4 divided by 0 0.03 equals 46 years of leaf accumulation to cover up this root. Okay, this is another typical mountain bike trail, which was not leaf blown last year, and you don't see any leaves on it whatsoever, hardly. They, this is a more popular trail and has had quite a few more people travel over it. It's very rooty in this section. So this section of trail was not leaf blown, and there isn't a hint of a leaf on it, because it's kind of muddy, and all the leaves got ground into the dirt. Okay, here's another trail that was not leaf blown, and there's almost no discernible measure of leaves, but let's measure these leaves and let's measure that root. Okay, so there's zero <coughs> practically. Oh, yeah, let me get a measure of that. Okay, so right here is the only discernible leaf, and that is 0 0.006. Now I'm going to try to get all the leaves here up. Okay, so that's down to dirt. So here's all the leaves that accumulated and have not really disintegrated, and we have 0 0.0445. Right in front of there we have a root that on this side is two and a half inches. 2.5 divided by 0 0.0445. 56 years. 
I don't have 56 years left. I can't wait that long. I either got to cut this root out or bury it. And the leaf blowing of the 0.0445 inches of uh, leaf cover isn't going to hurt much. Now one of the sustainable trail building techniques advocated for by IMBA, the International Mountain Bike Association, is to bench cut on a side hill. When you do that, you try to get down to mineral soil so that your tread is mineral soil and not organic material. So if you look at the side of this, there's some organic material here, which they advocate getting rid of. And then there's mineral soil down here. So that organic material is about probably three inches. The problem is not erosion, it's not leaf blowing, it's that this soil packs down from use, especially if you ride in the wet, which everybody around here does. So that three inches of soil probably goes down to one or less. All these roots here are right on the surface. That root is about three quarters of an inch underneath the, the nothingness organic material here. So that's why the trails are rooty. It's not from leaf blowing, it's just soil compaction. And at 0.03 inches of leaf matter per year, it's not gonna fill in in my lifetime. Okay, let's see how much this trail is cupped. Got about two and a quarter inches. Okay, let's see what we got here. Four and a quarter inches. Okay, this is a trail that was leaf blown last year. This looks like a little low spot. About inch and three quarters. Okay, that's almost three and a quarter inches. So this is the Honey Bear Trail. And I've done some extensive derooting on this trail and also have leaf blown it every year for quite a number of years. That's about two and three quarters inches. So I look at this tree and the tree roots coming out of it. They come along here. Even where there's been no traffic, the roots are above ground and then they go into the trail. And this one right here goes above ground all the way back to the tree. So a lot of these trees have very shallow root systems. They're all right at the top. Okay, this is a brand new section of trail and at the moment, as I'm walking along, I do not feel any roots whatsoever underneath my feet. However, once this gets ridden in the rain and through a freeze-thaw period, all those roots will come out because they're all very, very close to the surface. So one thing I was wondering was how deep is the topsoil that we have in New England and how long ago did it start to form? So the last glacier was around 20,000 years in New England and it started to retreat 18,000 years ago. And so who knows, maybe 15,000 years ago we started having soils accumulate. So what I wanted to do was figure out how deep the soil is and I couldn't find that anywhere on the web. So I went out to several ATV trails which are terribly eroded and tried to find the deepest one and see how deep that was and then I'm going to divide it by say 15,000 years and see how much soil accumulates per year. Okay, this is a typical ATV trail. And what I want to do is figure out how much erosion has occurred. So you can see the banking over there and the banking over there. 29 inches. Okay, here's another spot. 32 inches, 31 inches. Okay, this trail is almost down to bedrock. Let's see how deep the topsoil is here. 51 inches. Okay, so that was the deepest topsoil I found. So 51 inches divided by 15,000 years equals 0 0.0034 inches per year. And say I'm off by a factor of two or four or 10. Say I'm off by a factor of 10. Multiply that by 10. Three one hundredths of an inch of soil accumulates per year. That means a one inch root would take 29 years to fill in with naturally occurring soil, if I'm right. And who knows, I could be way off, but that's why I think leaf blowing isn't nearly as bad as people make it out to be. You're not taking that much leaf litter off the trail each year. Okay, even in places where there are no trails, why wouldn't these rocks be covered up by leaves by now if the leaf matter accumulated so much? Okay, so I hope I've convinced you that leaf blowing is not the problem. However, this year I am not going to leaf blow the trails and I have a totally different reason for that. Last year we had a ton of snow in December, but then in January it all melted and January, February, March, April, we had no snow and we had freezing and thawing temperatures all year long. And the trails that had been leaf blown 
were muddier than the trails that had not been leaf blown. So this year, because of global warming, I am not going to leaf blow the trails in the Pittsfield State Forest. Somebody has already started doing that, and I wish they didn't, but I actually don't think it's a good idea because we don't have snow. If we had snow on top of the dirt, I think it's fine that they were leaf blown. But if we don't have snow on top of the dirt and we have freeze thaw conditions all winter long, it's probably better to leave the leaves. Things won't be quite as muddy during the ugly part of the year. Now, we have no time of the year where we're not allowed to ride on the trails here, which is good in a lot of ways because I want to ride my bike year round. When you do ride through the freeze thaw, you, you can you leave some pretty big ruts. Those go away though, so I don't think it's such a big deal that people make out of it. The ruts just go away over the course of the spring and summer. So anyway, that's why I'm not going to leaf blow this year. Much to the happiness of those who don't want me to leaf blow. So thanks for watching and if your trails are leaf blown, just live with it. Thank the person who did it and enjoy riding them. Oh, let me add one more thing. I do a ton of maintenance in the Pittsfield State Forest and I would love to have help. If you are interested in helping out, contact me. Thanks for watching.